my name is Ling. I'm a RN. You click on my video, I assume you're a nursing student. You're probably learning this topic liver cirrhosis this week and you will definitely going to be on your next nursing exam. You are so stressful, you need some wine to relax. But you are so poor, you can only afford a box wine from the gas station. But look at me, I am an IA now, I can afford better wine. Oh, where do I find my wine? I also get it from the gas station, but I got it from the $10 section. You need to pass your exam. You want to become a nurse. You need some help from my channel, Daily Inclex Question. Let's go. This is question number one. A patient with cirrhosis of the liver hepatitis and is going for paracentesis the next morning. What instructions should you give to the patient? A. During this procedure, the patient is placed in the low follows position. B. The patient should MPO overnight. And C. The patient should not take any fluids before this procedure. And D. The patient should void before the paracentesis. Let's see A first. It says the patient should place in the low follows position and that is wrong. When the patients have ascites, he have very difficulty like even breathe when the patients lay flat or even just like sit the lower follows position. What you should do, you should uh, place the patients in the high follows position or at the edge of the bed. And B is says the patient should MPO overnight. You don't have to do that and that is wrong. And C, the patient should not take any fluids before this procedure. And that is wrong as well. Since B and C, they are very similar. Nursing students, you have to think about that. Since they are very similar, they should cancel each other out. And D, the correct answer is D. The patient should void before this paracentesis. The reasons behind it is the uh, patient have full blood during this procedure. The needles of the paracentesis might accidentally puncture of the patient's bladder. See question number two. When planning care for a patient with cirrhosis, what do you give highest priority to which nursing diagnosis? A. Imbalanced nutrition, less than body requirements related to anorexia. B. Is impaired skin integrity related to edema, ascites, and pruritus. C. Excess fluid volume related to portal hypertension. Or D. Ineffective breathing pattern related to pressures on diaphragms and reducing the lung volume. So the question in here is, says the highest priority. When you see those keywords, you have to think about ABCs. What is ABC? Airway, bacon, and cheeseburger, right? I'm sorry. I mean, um, I mean, ABC means airway, breathing, and circulation. So those things you have to think about. What will kill the patient right away? So A, imbalanced nutrition. Less than body requirements related to anorexia. Is that a true statement? That is a true statement. But will this, will malnutrition kill the patient right away? The answer is no. So A is not the right answer. And B, impaired skin integrity. Will impaired skin integrity kill the patient right away? The answer is no. Let's see C, excess fluid volume related to portal hypertension. A lot of students see the portal hypertension. They will immediately they will think about gastro varices. And they will see the patients develop portal hypertension. They will develop gastro varices. And then the varices will rupture. And then the patient will breathe out. But go ahead to see the question one more time. Did the question say anything about the patients already developed the gastro varices? So no, right? So please don't assume that. And D, infected breathing pattern related to pressure of the diaphragms. So D is the right answer. Remember, always remember your ABCs. Airway, breathing, and circulation. Okay, let's see question number three. Which assessment findings strongly indicate possible for cirrhosis? A, peripheral edema. That is a uh, symptoms of patient with cirrhosis, but you also know that 
heart failure patient, they can also have peripheral edema as well. So A is not the answer. And B says dry skin. Well, right now is fall season. If I don't put lotion on after I took a shower, I can have dry skin as well. So B is not the answer. And C, hepatomegaly. Cirrhosis patients have an enlarged liver because the liver is very fibrotic and uh, nodular. So you can sometimes, a lot of times you can palpate the liver. So C is the correct answer. D, pruritus. Like I just say, if I shower and I didn't put lotion on, I can have dry skin as well as pruritus. So the correct answer is C. Number four, the physician prescribes oral spironolacto for a patient with cirrhosis. Which of the following would be an indication that this medication is working? What is spironolacto? It's also called aldactyl. It's a diuretic, right? Okay, let's see option A. Improve of label respirations and B. Decrease mental status. Well, changing mental status is a symptom for a patient with cirrhosis, but what medication will um, improve the mental status? It's lactin loss, right? So B is not the answer. And C, elevated blood pressure. Well, like I said before, this medication, Eldactyl, is a diuretic. It will increase the urine output and uh, decrease blood pressure, not increase blood pressure. So C is not the correct answer. Let's say D, improve bowel movements. Improve bowel movements and then B, decrease mental status. They're all talking about lactulose. They're not talking about this aldactyl. So A is the correct answer. Why is that? Because cirrhosis patients have ascites, the big belly. So all of those fluid push the diaphragm, it will compromise the patient's respirations. Five, the nurse is giving discharge education for a patient with cirrhosis. Which of the following statement best indicates that the patient has understood the teaching? A, I can take acetaminophen for pain instead of aspirin. Wrong. The patient should not take Tylenol for his pain because Tylenol is possibly hypotoxic. And, and B, I should take a high carb and a high protein diet to provide energy. The front of this statement is correct. The patient with cirrhosis, he should take a high carb uh, diet. But the problem is this high protein, you know. The livers help break down protein to amino acid and then pee it out, this uh, unwanted substance. But the patients with liver cirrhosis, their liver function is much compromised. So the patient should take a low protein diet instead of a high protein diet. And C. C, I should avoid straining stool to prevent hemorrhage. And that is the right statement because cirrhosis patients have very low crowding factor. So the patient is at very high risk for breathing out. So C is the correct answer. And let's see option D. If I take my medication on time and have a lot of rest, my cirrhosis will be cured. Well, unfortunately, cirrhosis is a chronic disease. It can be controlled, but it will never be cured. Which of the following intervention or interventions will not be nursing intervention for patient when hepatic encephalopathy develop? Select all the apply. A. Restricting fluid to 1000 ml a day. Restricting fluid is an intervention for ascites, right? So there will not be the intervention for hepatic encephalopathy. So A is the correct answer. B, implementing a low protein diet. We already talked about the low protein diet in question five. 
It is a true statement, right? To treat a, a hepatic encephalopathy, because it's the protein breakdown into ammonia, and then the ammonia is very toxic. The patient's damaged liver cannot properly process ammonia. In this disorder, ammonia builds up into the blood, and then it travels to the brain, so it can、uh, cause、uh, change mental status, confusion. Disorientation called administering lactulose, and that is the right intervention for a patient with hepatic encephalopathy, because、um, the lactulose can draw ammonia from blood into the colon, where it can be removed from the body. So C is not the right answer, and then let's see option D, administering IV so poor. Albumin. The rosis patients have low albumin, and the water may leave the blood vessel and collect it into the tissue. So A and D, both two options are the interventions for ascites. So they are the correct answers.